we are getting uh, DeSantis's statement. He posted this on X, everybody. We're going to listen to part of it. Let's play that from the control booth. We've prayed and deliberated on the way forward. If there was anything I could do to produce a favorable outcome, more campaign stops, more interviews, I would do it. But I can't ask our supporters to volunteer their time and donate their resources if we don't have a clear path to victory. Accordingly, I am today suspending my campaign. Okay, there you have it. It is definitely official. So, Ali, uh, there have been folks who have suggested, Ali, that um, he will keep an eye on 2028. Oh, I understand. Ali's just run away. Okay, yeah. she's obviously there trying to get more from no, Nikki I'm Haley. Here, I'm oh, here. There you are. Okay, um, <laughs> you're there. Okay, so so my question is, uh, now that you have him out and Nikki Haley in, right? Just the two of them. What do you think the chances are that Donald Trump is looking at this like, hmm, I could potentially unify my Republican Party if I picked her to be my veep? I know she has said countless times, I am not playing for second. But is this something that you have heard any sort of whisper campaign from her colleagues there, from those that you know are associated with the campaign, that she might consider in this particular circumstance? So I'm going to tell you just from watching her and then what we've actually heard her said. We heard her say just two days ago to a group of diners in New Hampshire that she's not going to be vice president, that that's off the table. Fine. From watching her, I also think that this is a woman who has never been running for vice president. The way that she has run has been strategic. They have had a plan from the very outset of it. And the people who are really talking about Haley on the VP list, the people who are really stoking that fire have been the Vivek Ramaswamy campaign, the Ron the Santos campaign and many of her rivals. I do think that there is something that is slightly gendered about that. We look at the fact that it's usually women and women of color who voters tend to look at and say, well, maybe not yet. But at the same time, too, she is someone who has such a high degree, a high political resume, so much experience on the foreign policy front, and she could bring in more voters. It would be someone who could unify the party for Trump. But at the same time, I, could, I don't think that that's why she ran this race. Yeah. OK, uh, you stand by, my friend. Dasha, we're going to go back to you with the DeSantis campaign. Uh, give me anything more you're hearing officially from the folks there. Um, what What's the word? How much level of disappointment is there or was this expected over these last couple of days? There was some handwriting on the wall. Yeah, I can tell you um, that the event that was supposed to happen uh, today here in Manchester, New Hampshire, at 5 o'clock has been canceled. DeSantis is actually not in the state right now. He is back home in Florida. So any additional announcements that we might hear from him tonight, any official word, um, any speaking to the press, any anything on camera that we might see from him later will come from, uh, from his home in Florida. Um, I'm confirming that that's in Tallahassee, but I believe he's in the capital in Tallahassee. That is where his family um, flew off to after uh, after Iowa. Um, I am getting word from one of my sources that the decision was made uh, this afternoon. Um, th clearly, deliberations were happening um, up until the last minute. I mean, I know from watching from the outside, we were watching these moves being made. He pulled out of Meet the Press um, and CNN appearances this morning. We were wondering, uh, we don't have reporting as to why, but it's certainly led to some speculation. Um, the move uh, to leave South Carolina uh, and add these New Hampshire events, none of which are, are happening now, by the way, um, also raised a lot of eyebrows and a lot of questions. There was a feeling of uneasiness and a feeling of... Um, of, of a little bit of a depletion, right? The air seemed to have come out of, of this campaign over the last few days. And I'll tell you, my last interview with him coming right off of Iowa and South Carolina, one of the anecdotes that he shared with me um, as he was trying to, you know, celebrate a second place finish there, uh, he said that a voter came up to him and said, you know what, I'm going to vote for Trump this time, but I'm going to vote for you next time. And in hindsight, looking back at that conversation, 
completion, I wonder if that wasn't him starting to lay the groundwork to uh, potentially look towards his future, you know, in 2028 or beyond, um, kind of knowing that the writing was on the wall. But this is someone who, who is a fighter. Knowing him over the course of this campaign, I, I can bet you that he did not want to let go of this race until he absolutely had to. So we're going to be digging in on the reporting to know, uh, to try to find out what exactly led to this decision, led, led to this decision coming right now at this moment. Um, but but certainly uh, a, a surprising end given all of the, the twists and turns over the last over the last several hours, Alex, despite, again, uh, not, not a surprise that this happened, but how and when and where uh, did, did take some of us by surprise. Yeah. Dasha, I'm going to ask you to stand by as well as we bring in uh, Susan Del Percio, of course, GOP strategist, MSNBC political analyst. Uh, Susan, you were on this broadcast less than two hours ago. You go, crystal ball girl. You said this was <laughs> going to happen. You said that he had more reason to drop out now before even a vote could be cast in New Hampshire so that he wouldn't have too much of a loser identification if he has any hope of going for the 2028 presidential uh, election and run a campaign then. So you were right. All the handwriting <laughs> on the wall. You were right. Well, we know that Ron DeSantis is nothing but, if not nothing but ambitious, and that he does have a long road, um, long runway ahead of him if he wants to try this again. It, I also hear that his donors had completely dried up on him. That was one thing that was really mm. holding the campaign back. And, you know, I know that Tim Scott's endorsement of Donald Trump, uh, the senator from South Carolina, was a big deal. But the other thing that happened in that same day is that Donald Trump brought up a bunch of South Carolinian legislators, including the lieutenant governor. And I think that also showed that there was just no way DeSantis could make any move in South Carolina. So a little bit of self-preservation on his part. It's the smart political move. It is interesting that he chose not to go to New Hampshire and endorse Donald Trump. But I think that, you know, these are hard, very hard decisions to make for a candidate. To drop out is a very big deal. It takes this has been a toll on him and his family. They've been going through it. And I do think they made the right decision. Yeah. So um, let me ask you what I was talking about with uh, both Ali and Dashan as well. And that is, given the split in the Republican Party, though certainly overwhelmingly in favor of Donald Trump right now, would it be a wise move for Donald Trump to try to bring in Nikki Haley, have some conversations as his vice presidential candidate, only because with only two candidates left, you'd think that would unify the party. Now, again, she has said multiple times, I'm not playing for second. We even heard Donald Trump say yesterday, musing, I don't think I would put Nikki Haley in the VP candidacy mm -hmm. position. But he didn't shut the door on it. Just given the fact you've seen what's coming, would it be smart of Donald Trump to pick her? Well, I guess I never look to Donald Trump and say, will he make the smart decision? What I do is, what is the decision that best fits his ego? And Nikki Haley doesn't match that. Nikki Haley is too strong, too independent, too able to think for herself and willing to, to give her own opinion. Even when she was in the Trump administration, she she went a little bit against Donald Trump from time to time. So I, I don't see him wanting to have someone of Nikki Haley's strength on the ticket with him. He'd much rather have someone that is unknown, kind of like how Mike Pence was, someone who's known within the conservative background, but isn't known to the general public, and who can kind of make him look good. So I, I'll go back to my prediction mm. of Alabama's Katie Britt. Yeah, that is an interesting one you brought up earlier as well. At least Stefanik's name has been bantered out a heck of a lot lately, given her performances on the campaign trail and uh, endorsing and encouraging voters to vote for Donald Trump. Uh, please stay where you are, my friend. Susan, stay right there. We're going to go right now to Vaughn Hilliard, everybody. He has been following the Trump campaign. Vaughn, let's get to any reaction thus far from the Trump campaign to uh, having Ron DeSantis drop out. 
So far, so far, no word from Donald Trump himself uh, and his senior advisor, Jason Miller, just stepped out of campaign headquarters in Manchester and told our embed Jake Trailer that he will let Donald Trump be the first to respond and comment on Ron DeSantis dropping out. You know, these are part of conversations where I had asked a senior advisor just about uh, 24 hours ago about whether they would, uh, you know, give a gentle off ramp to Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley to drop out and instead of, you know, all but dropping the bomb on their campaigns, allowing those two to, you know, uh, be brought back into the fold. And the senior advisor told me, we'll let the chips fall where they may. Donald Trump, I am told, had been uh, furious with Ron DeSantis, particularly over the loyalty and the fact that he felt like he had propelled Ron DeSantis to the Florida governorship in the first, first place in political national relevance, and that he had believed that Ron DeSantis should have dropped out long ago and, of course, not challenged him at all. But that's not what reality is. And we are here in July of 2024, and Ron DeSantis dropping out and endorsing him. And I think that is the question mark. Does Donald Trump try to, uh, you know, uh, welcome him back in. Last night on this stage, he was explicit in saying that, you know, he doesn't even talk about Ron DeSanctimonious, is the name he gave him, anymore, uh, because he didn't find him relevant. And so the question is, does Donald Trump feel like it's worth his while? Because on the other hand, he did say on the campaign stage as well last night that it was time for the Republican Party to come together. And so these are the realities that we have, frankly, watched before Alex play out. Eight years ago, we watched the Republican Party rally around Donald Trump, and we're watching that now. But to what extent does Donald Donald Trump feel like he owes that loyalty or that, you know, bear hug in return to these folks? Or can he go forward, uh, you know, as Donald Trump's party without these folks that he feels like betrayed him in the past? That's what we're going to be looking at in the days ahead. Yeah. Now.